Welcome, action movie aficionados. It's Jack, and we're about to embark on an epic journey through Cold Pursuit, released in 2019. Hold on to your seats because this video contains explosive spoilers. Get ready, and let's jump into the heart-pounding action. Nels Coxman, a snowplow driver, and his wife Grace lead a quiet life in the town of Kyo. The couple is frequently visited by their son, Carl Coxman, who works at the Kyo airport. Coxman is honored with the Citizen of the Year award from the community, but the night takes a dark turn for him when his son, along with his friend Dante, is kidnapped from the airport. On their way, the kidnappers inject Carl with a heroin overdose, leading to his death, while Dante manages to escape from the van. Meanwhile, in Denver, a drug cartel leader named Viking urges his son Ryan to use violence at school to retaliate against bullies, but Ryan, due to his peaceful nature, refuses to comply. Coxman and Grace receive the devastating news of Carl's death and are called to identify the body. The doctor attributes Carl's death to a drug overdose, but Coxman, aware of his son's clean history, disputes the claim. Grace is heartbroken at the sight of her son, leading to an argument with Coxman over his apparent lack of emotions. Distraught by his son's death, Coxman attempts to end his own life with a shotgun but is interrupted by Dante, who has been hiding at the workshop since the incident. Though shocked by Carl's fate, Dante narrates the entire incident, revealing that Carl's death was not the result of an overdose. Enraged by this revelation, Coxman compels Dante to disclose the names and locations of the kidnappers, leading him to a person named Speedo. He confronts Speedo at a local club, where Speedo denies any knowledge. Despite threats, Coxman knocks him down. When Speedo regains consciousness, Coxman further coerces him, and he reveals that he worked on the orders of a person named Limbo. After confirming Limbo's identity, Coxman kills him and disposes of his body in the river. While escorting Ryan to school, Viking is informed of Speedo's disappearance. As Speedo used to work for him, Ryan suspects Viking's involvement, but Viking assures him that he has no part in it. After eliminating Speedo, Coxman locates Limbo at his workplace and tortures him for information about his leader. Coxman shoots Limbo and disposes of the body in the river, mirroring his earlier actions. When he returns home, Grace questions him about Carl's hobbies but becomes upset to learn that he never truly connected with their son. Meanwhile, in Denver, Viking's ex-wife visits him and informs him about filing a custody report for Ryan. Viking reacts angrily, attempting to bribe her, but she staunchly refuses. Before further convincing, Viking is informed about Limbo's disappearance. He begins investigating his staff, scolding them while a worried Ryan observes. Coxman continues his quest for vengeance, shooting another gangster named Santa, who was also implicated in his son's kidnapping. Returning home, he discovers that Grace has left, distressed by his apparent lack of grief for their deceased son. Left alone, Coxman seeks solace with his brother, Brock Coxman, an ex-gangster, and explains the situation. Brock reveals the mistaken identity, explaining that Carl was wrongly assumed to be Dante, who attempted to steal gold from the drug lord Viking. As Brock used to work with Viking, he informs Coxman that reaching Viking is nearly impossible. Despite Coxman's desire for revenge, Brock doubts his capacity to take a life, given his lack of involvement in such activities. As they discuss the situation, Viking is informed about Santa's disappearance. Growing suspicious, Viking believes his rival, White Bull, is behind the chaos, noting that a third person from his gang has gone missing within a week. He recalls their signed contract not to interfere in each other's territories and concludes that they are violating the agreement. Viking decides to teach them a lesson and orders his men to kidnap a member of the rival gang, torturing him for information. Frustrated by the captive's silence, Viking shoots him, unaware that he is the only son of his rival, White Bull. In Kyo, police detectives Kim Dash and John Gipp receive information about the murder and suspect it could mark the beginning of a turf war between the two gangs, potentially jeopardizing the peace of the town. Although Gipp appears hesitant to initiate the investigation, Dash urges him to take action against the looming threat. At Brock's house, he reveals to Coxman that Viking's real name is Trevor Kalkoti, advising him to hire a professional assassin named Eskimo if he intends to kill him. Brock recommends paying Eskimo up front, assuring Coxman that he will get the job done. Following Brock's advice, Coxman contacts Eskimo and invites him to town. While showing him a room in a local hotel, Coxman offers Eskimo half of the agreed amount. However, Eskimo initially mistakes Coxman for a police officer and starts arguing with him. 
Coxman eventually convinces Eskimo of his identity, hands him the money, and the assassin sets off to fulfill the contract. Eskimo, however, double-crosses Coxman and goes to Viking, demanding the same amount to sell the information that someone is trying to have him killed. Viking transfers the money to Eskimo's account, and the assassin reveals that Coxman is behind the plot. Suspecting Brock Coxman due to their past association, Viking scolds Eskimo for not honoring his deal with Coxman and shoots him for his unethical behavior. As Viking's men dispose of Eskimo's body, Nels Coxman attempts to gather more information about Viking, aka Trevor Kalkoti. Viking arrives at Brock's house and offers him a ride. During the car ride, Viking inquires about the motive behind the killings and threatens to murder Coxman. Brock, already dying of rectal cancer, decides to protect his brother and takes the blame, claiming he sought revenge because his father stole his woman. After hearing Brock's explanation and deeming him a threat, Viking murders him as well. Meanwhile, the rival gang leader White Bull mourns his son's death. He informs his gang about the old deal with Viking's father but declares it null and void as they've settled the debt with his son's murder. White Bull plans to exact revenge on Viking and announces a son for a son strategy. Discovering that the Eskimo did not carry out the assassination, Coxman spies on Viking's house and observes him with his son, learning about the son's prep school. After killing Brock and confirming that White Bull had no involvement in the murders of his gang members, Viking decides to reinforce his contract with them. To reinforce the contract, Viking shoots his own man, Dexter, and orders his team to send Dexter's head as a macabre gift to White Bull. Meanwhile, White Bull has already ordered the kidnapping of Ryan from his school but holds off on executing the plan when he receives a message from Viking. In the meantime, Kim Dash receives information about Carl's death, supposedly due to an overdose, and his connection to Dante at the Kyo airport. She visits Coxman, expressing her doubts about Carl's cause of death. Despite her request for help in uncovering the truth, Coxman refuses, stating that there is nothing she can do for him now that his son is gone. Later, Coxman arrives at Ryan's school, claiming that his father sent him to pick him up. Although hesitant at first, Ryan, who has never seen Coxman before, ultimately agrees to go with him. White Bull's men spot Coxman outside the school and begin chasing him, but Coxman manages to safely bring Ryan home. Viking learns about his son's disappearance and, before taking action, his wife confronts him for taking Ryan without permission. Viking assures her that someone will call with ransom demands, and he will secure their son's release. Meanwhile, White Bull's men receive a text on Dexter's phone revealing his gang member's location at a hotel. They track him down and kill him. White Bull and his team arrive at a ski resort in Kyo, keeping a close eye on Viking and his gang. Simultaneously, Coxman arrives at his house with Ryan, offering to prepare lunch for him. During their conversation, Ryan inquires about Coxman's family, to which Coxman reveals that he no longer lives with his son. Despite this, Coxman treats Ryan well, even offering him Carl's room to sleep in. In an unexpected moment of connection, Coxman reads Ryan a story and invites him for a ride on his snowplow. While waiting for their next mission, the gang members enjoy their time at the resort. White Bull, however, struggles with the absence of his son, fortifying his resolve to seek revenge. In Denver, Viking's men bring in a school janitor who reveals that Coxman took Ryan. Realizing his mistake and assuming Brock's involvement, Viking orders his team to go to Kyo while he heads there alone. Coxman calls Viking, urging him to come alone to retrieve his son. Viking assures him but sends his team to raid Coxman's house. However, Coxman has taken Ryan out for a ride on his snowplow. When Viking's team arrives at Coxman's house, they find a police car, and Coxman introduces Ryan as his nephew. Gip informs Coxman about the presence of many cars, and Coxman realizes Viking has arrived. The search for Ryan leads them to a company name in one of the pictures, prompting Viking and his men to head there. As Viking and his men depart, one of his men leaks the information, alerting White Bull. Coxman attempts to shoot Viking but is interrupted by Ryan. He quickly takes Ryan back inside, asking him to stay put until his return. Coxman tries to shoot again but is caught by his men, who take him to Viking. Before Coxman can reveal anything, White Bull and his gang arrive, sparking a fierce fight that claims lives from both sides. Viking attempts to escape, but Coxman traps him in his car while White Bull shoots him. As the police arrive, they discover Viking right before his demise, and Ryan drives away in the snowplow. White Bull, satisfied that Coxman is not a criminal, puts down his gun, and they drive away together. In an unexpected turn, 
the last remaining gang member on a parachute accidentally lands in front of them and gets killed by the plow. The end. Thank you for watching.